Hello everyone and welcome to Machine Learning and Large Language Model Tutorials. In this tutorial we explain how to use OLAMA and LAMA 3.1 in LangChain and Python and we explained how to create large language model chains and templates in LangChain. Here is the motivation and big picture. Our goal is to create a series of tutorials on how to develop Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG applications from scratch by using open source large language models or LLMs. RAG applications combine or augment LLMs with additional knowledge databases such as documents, reports, tables, etc. to improve the outputs of LLMs or to obtain intelligent conclusions or answers from the provided knowledge database. This means that we are giving to an LLM an additional library that should be used to provide answers to our questions and queries. The ultimate goal is to develop a personal AI-based assistant that can analyze our documents, tables, images, and that can provide answers to our queries. In these tutorials, we will use OLAMA and LangChain to run and test different LLMs. We selected OLAMA since it enables us to easily run a number of powerful LLMs locally. In particular, we will extensively use and test a LAMA 3.1 LLM. On the other hand, we will also use LangChain, as well as some other libraries to develop the RAG applications that can be run locally and that are based on OLAMA. So, what is covered in the tutorial that you're currently watching? In this particular tutorial, we explain how to use OLAMA and LAMA 3.1 through LangChain, and we will provide an introduction to chaining and prompt templates in LangChain. In particular, we explain how to install OLAMA, LAMA 3.1, and LangChain in Python and Windows. We will also write two test codes explaining how to use OLAMA in LangChain. Everything will be done through Python virtual environments. The first step is to download and to install OLAMA. For that purpose, you need to go to the official OLAMA webpage and then you need to click on download. After clicking on the download, you need to select your operating system. In our case, it's Windows. Then, after clicking on Windows, you need to click on Download for Windows to download the file. Then, choose the download folder. In my case, it will be the default downloads folder and click on Save. And it might take even several minutes to download OLAMA, so be patient. After the download process is completed, go to the Downloads folder and double-click on OLAMA Setup. And you just need to follow the procedure, click on install, and just wait for a while. Again, this will take some time. After several minutes, the installation process will be completed and OLAMA is installed. However, where is OLAMA? Now, if you click over here, you will see this cute icon over here of OLAMA. And if you click here, you can see that OLAMA is actually installed and running in the, in the background. However, let's verify that OLAMA is installed. The verification is to open a command prompt. So click on Start and search for Command Prompt. Over here in the command prompt, type OLAMA and let's see what will happen. And bang, here it is. OLAMA is installed. If you don't see a response to this command OLAMA, this means that something went wrong and try to install OLAMA again. You can, for example, search for models by saying OLAMA list, and we don't have any model over here, and this is expected since we didn't download the model. Let's learn how to download and install the model. To download the model, you need to go back to olama.com and over here search for LAMA 3.1 or for any large language model you want. However, in this tutorial, we will be using LAMA 3.1. Then click here 
and let's select our model. Let's select this 8 billion parameter model and over here you can see that the installation command is being generated. Simply copy this command, go back to the terminal and type this. And now the model will be pulled, that is it's going to be downloaded from the online remote repository and the model will be installed. Now here again you have to be patient since over here you can see that the model is almost 5 gigabytes. So wait until the model is being pulled. After several minutes the model will be downloaded and moreover the model will be started and you'll see this prompt over here. And let's test the model. For example, let's ask a question, how are you? Let's see what will happen. Okay, the model is working and let's do an additional test. How many days we have in a year? Let's see. Okay, good, so the model is working. Next, we need to exit from this model. So let's type this to get help in order to see how to exit from the model. And you can see over here that we can type by. So let's type by and let's see. Good, we are back. Okay, let's now verify that we have actually model stored in our cache or in the general Olama folder. To do that, we need to type Olama list and we will see our model. This is the name of the model, this is the ID of the model, and the most important thing is to remember the name of the model, since we will be using this model in LangChain. The next step is to create our workspace folder and a Python virtual environment such that we can start coding. For that purpose, go to the C drive and over here make a folder called Codes. I'm not going to execute this command since I already have the folder called codes, however you should execute this command. After executing this command, navigate to the codes folder and inside of this folder create another folder. I will call this folder as lang chain test and then I will navigate to lang chain test and over here I will create and activate my Python virtual environment. To create a Python virtual environment, we actually need to execute this command. After executing this command, we need to activate our Python virtual environment. To do that, we need to execute this activate.bat file, and after that, you will see that prompt changed, you can see that we are currently in our virtual environment called environment1. The next step is to install all the necessary libraries. First of all, we need olama. Consequently, let's type pip install olama. And this will take some time. Then we need to install langchain and integration of langchain with olama. Consequently, we need to execute this. pip install with these two parameters langchain lang and then dash olama. Okay, now here be patient since this might take a while. Okay, not too bad. Next, let's write our first code that will explain how to use olama and llama 3.1 in langchain. For that purpose, let's start a Python editor. In my case, I will, be, I will be using Visual Studio Code. Consequently, I need to type code and dot. And here is Visual Studio Code. I need to create a new file and I will call this file as test1.py and I will save it in my base folder. And here is the content of the file. And let's explain this file line by line. First, from langchain olama, we need to import chat olama. Chat olama will enable us to communicate with olama. Then, from langchain.core messages, we need to import human message and system messages. 
these two functions, or better to say, objects, are used to define the questions and to define system messages. Then, we need to define the model. To do that, we call chatolama and we specify the model. Over here, I'm specifying the name, and this should be the exact name of the model we downloaded. For example, if you downloaded some other llama model, for example, a larger model, then you need to update the name over here. Then over here, we are asking messages. This system message has multiple purposes. However, in this tutorial, we will not explain all the purposes. I'm just stating over here, please provide the answer to the following question, and that's it. And then here is our human message or the message that the LLM should provide an answer to. And I'm simply asking, what are the top three largest cities in the world? Then over here, we call our model, that is, we simply call this method or function invoke and we pass the message. Then what will happen? This invoke command will call Olama, Olama will call Olama 3.1 and the, act, the question will be asked, the answer will be generated and the answer will be stored in the response. Then over here we need to print the response. However, the response itself is a data structure and it contains another sub-object sub or we can say that it's even a value or a key, it's actually content. So to get the string that stores our response, we need to type response.content and over here I will save the response in the file. With open, I name the, my file, the name of the file will be output.txt, the mode of opening will be write, the encoding will be the standard UTF-8 encoding, and I'm opening it as text file. So what's happening over here? This with open will ensure that if something goes wrong, the file will be closed. That is, if there is some exception or whatever happens, the file will be closed at the end. And this is very important. Or after we write all the, doc all the strings or everything we need to write in this file, the file will be closed. And that's why it's very important to open files and to write content inside of the file by using vid. And over here we simply type text file.write and then we need to type response.content. And that's it. Okay, let's save this file and let's execute it. To execute this file, we need to press Control shift p then we need to search for Python, select Interpreter, and over here you have to make sure that you're selecting the proper Interpreter. In our case, we need to select the Interpreter inside of our virtual environment. Consequently, we will select it here, and then we can simply run this file and be patient over here. Okay, now let's wait for the response, and here it is. The three largest cities in the world, ranked by population within their urban areas, are Tokyo, Delhi, and Shanghai. And this is a good answer. Now, let's make sure that the output is stored inside of the file. That is, let's open this file, and here is the output. It looks amazing. Good. Next. Let's explain how to write templates and how to do chaining inside of LangChain. Let us create the second file, click on File, New File, and I will call the file test2.py. And I will save it in the base folder, and here is the content of the file. So, what's the purpose of this file? Well. This is just a toy example, however, this example demonstrates one very important concept. Over here, we are going to provide a template. That is, a user over here can specify a number and it can specify a word. Now you can imagine that this can be embedded in some web application and you will have some entry where a user enters a number and enters a word. In this toy example, the purpose is to generate three synonyms of the word 
angry or any other word we specify that the user specifies and this is called a template now how do we write this template and how do we execute it from langchain olama we import chat olama chat olama is used to interface langchain with olama then from langchain core prompts we need to import chat prompt template that is we need to use template over here we create our model we specify the model name and then we create our prompt template we call chat prompt template then from messages and look what happens over here now here in this tuple we specify system and then here is the system question or this is basically what we are asking our LLM so we are saying list then what happens over here this is not a word this is actually a parameter that is provided by the user and here it is actually here number so number is encoded over here and currently this sentence will read list three synonyms of the word specified by human so human is us and here's human then the human will provide a word and the word will be angry and you can see that this word is actually encoded here that is these are the variables number and word that can take any values provided by a human being and this is very very important and these are the so-called templates and this is how we create them then let me explain chaining chain is a very elegant way of using LLMs and doing complex operations with LLM here we define a chain and to use a chain we need to specify the prompt here is the prompt or a template and this prompt is passed to our model this vertical bar represents passing or sifting or an operation or filtering or a similar operation if you're familiar with Linux in Linux you have these pipes and they're being executed like this so over here something similar is happening the prompt is being passed to model or there is a chain between prompt and model and then once we define this chain then we call chain dot invoke and then what do we say over here we're saying substitute number by three and substitute word by angry and that's it okay after that we will just print the results or you can also use this trick over here or this command to save the result inside of a file okay so let's run this again control shift p select interpreter make sure that this interpreter is selected and run it and let's see what will happen here are the three words that are synonyms for angry they are furious enraged irate irate okay let's test this by providing some other word for example let's put here six words if they are so and let's for example say here smart and let's see what will happen intelligent clever brilliant savvy astute discerning perfect this is awesome this is actually good for people who are pre preparing GRE exam or a similar exam since it can be used to generate synonyms that you can use in your assignment or on your paper Okay, that's all for today and thanks for watching.